angry guy here, and women are miserable as men abandon them and become passport bros instead. <laughs> women are miserable. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the article. So we have an article today from Newsweek, and it's quite interesting. We know that women make up the vast majority of all college students now. However, the article is titled, College Kids Are Abandoning American Values. It's Going to Destroy Our Democracy. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And as you can see from this image right here, most of the people shown in this picture are young women. And if you notice, most of the guys are silent. Most of the guys in the picture are pretty quiet, pretty tame. Look at these solemn faces in the front, right? But then you have all these young women you know, throwing their hands up and hooing and hollering. Yeah. The college kids are not all right. A new poll from the Buckley Institute surveyed students at four-year colleges, and the results are deeply alarming. Young Americans are turning their backs on basic American principles of free speech, tolerance, and due process. In a way that's so drastic it genuinely endangers the future of our political order. And it's this disintegration that's only accelerating. The Buckley Institute has conducted this poll for nine years. Yet this year, for the first time ever, more students support shouting down speakers they disagree with than oppose this kind of mob censorship. In another first, a whopping 51% of students support speech codes, a drastic shift from last year when a plurality opposed speech codes. What's more, 46% of students now believe that offensive opinions should get other students reported to the university administration. Oh, and more than 50% of students literally believe certain topics should be banned from being debated on campus. Guys, it's so interesting because there's a lot of you guys in my comments now saying things like, oh, well, recent studies show that the, that um, the majority of Gen Zers, you know, or, or of uh, Gen high school Gen Zers are, males are now becoming more, more conservative. Yeah, and in that same study, it found that, yeah, Gen Z women are also becoming more liberal. And you have to consider that while Gen Z women as a majority are becoming more liberal, all right, even though you have some Gen Z males becoming conservative, all right, you also have a large portion of, of them going towards liberalism. At the end of the day, you're still going to end up with a significant portion of Gen Z that's choosing to, to go towards liberalism and towards censorship and expunging values that basically say that we need censorship we need to we need to walk walk back on american values the constitution needs to be amended that's really where we're at right now there's a lot of you guys that are like oh things are going to get better we don't have to worry about it it's not going to get any better a lot of you guys just don't get it. It's not going to get any better. The best thing you can do is to opt out and walk away. It's not going to get any better. And I keep on saying it because I need guys to wake up and understand that concept. It's just going to keep on getting worse and worse and worse. Don't be optimistic. Things will not improve in our lifetime. The only improvement is men walking away. That's the only improvement that you're going to see. Guys that are like, oh, there are laws changing. Yeah, but not fast enough. And at the end of the day, we're not going to have the kind of reversal that's necessary to really bring about real change. It doesn't matter how much things actually were to change. Men don't want to engage in Western society anymore. Okay? When you have a lot of these, when you have a lot of uh, women in society today that have an extraordinarily high body count, guys are guys don't want to engage anymore. Guys are like, yeah, you know what? I'm opting out. That's not something that I'm interested in. 
if I'm looking for something, if I'm looking for for a for for an actual relationship, then I'm going to go overseas. That's really what it's at right now. Let's continue. All right, so there, there's also an alarming, violent twist to the censurious, censuri, censuriness. I cannot pronounce that, but it's a form of censorship, I think. Rising among Gen Z college students, a whopping forty-five percent of students told pollsters it is justified to use physical violence to prevent people from expressing hate speech or making racially charged comments. This radical un-American idea is only becoming more un more popular. Back in the 2017, for example, only 30% of students supported this proposition. See the pattern yet? Many young college students don't respect the basic American ethos that reigned supreme for so long of, I may disagree with what you say, but I defend to the end your right to say it. And rather than addressing this problem, we're seeing it continue to get worse and worse. This isn't sustainable. For a long time, defenders and apologists of campus illiberalism argued that it that it's just happening on college campuses and that this, this is this is how, how some of you guys are this is what i'm talking about because there's a lot of you apologists in the comments all right a lot of you apologists in the comments you're saying that it, it's saying that it's only happening on college campuses and that berkeley and harvard have always been niche hotbeds of crazy they'll grow out of it basically but we've actually seen the opposite phenomenon play out in recent years. College graduates are taking their illiberal attitude toward speech and debate with them into the workforce and perpetuating them at the highest level of media, corporate America, and government. That's why we see low-level Spotify employees revolting against and trying to silence one of the app's most popular podcasters, Joe Rogan, for daring to talk to people with dangerous ideas. Guys, daring to talk with pe to people with dangerous ideas. So they want to completely shut down any discourse, any discussion of ideas they don't like. They don't want other people hearing them either. Not only will they not listen, they don't want them being discussed. These are topics that should not be discussed. So this this is this is extraordinary form of thought policing, and they're gonna only going to use. It's only going to get worse because these are the same people that are going to want to use technology to to do things like, uh, you know, control how we can think, how we behave, how we react. I mean, you know, Facebook has been doing it for years, conditioning what you can say and what you can't do on their platform. And that's not just Facebook. It's various different platforms. YouTube does it. All the, all the platforms do it. But it's only going to become more extreme in the real world where they're going to thought, thought police you. All right. They've been doing this on college campuses. And now they're going to do this in the real world. They're going to do it at, at the highest level of every company, of every institution. Uh, basically, oh, you want to work here? Well, this is how you're allowed to think. You know, and it's not going to be enough for people who just avoid contact with one another and say nothing. Oh no, they're going to quiz you on these things. They, they're going to they're going to drill these things into you. You know, they're going to indoctrinate you. They're going to give you training on them. It's 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 it's. There's no way that you're going to be able to avoid it unless you disengage from you disengage from everything. You say, you know what? I'm cutting myself off from this. I'm done. I'm pulling back, and I'm only going to work when it's remote work. And that's that's one of the things that most guys really need to be working towards right now, either re remote work or working for yourself in a capacity where you can do your own thing and you're not constantly tied to tied to someone else who can dictate, you know, your movements. Yeah, that's that's really how it is. You know, you that's the only way that you're going to escape this thing because there's still jobs that have to get done and they have to hire the people with the skills to do it. Right. But you have to put what you have to be able to say, yeah, I'm not going to be around these people. You know, oh, you want to have a conversation? We could do that on Skype. And that's really how it is, you know, or we don't need to even communicate like that at all. Basically, here the, you know, here's the labor that you're asking for. You know, I provide the labor. 
you provide the pay, and then our business is done at the end of the week. And I don't want to get involved with your politics or anything else. That's all there is to it, you know. And like I said, there's plenty of opportunity for guys in that that are going into blue collar work. You know, basically, you go, you do your job, and you leave. You're a roofer, great. You're an electrician, great. You know, you're a handyman, garbage man. You're a plumber, great. You go in, you do your work, and you leave. And you charge, you charge, you charge, you charge. Very, very good. You charge like you you charge like you're a doctor. You charge more than a doctor. All right, you charge, you charge good. And if they don't like it, then you know your roof is good. Their roof is going to continue leaking, and it's only going to get worse until they need to replace the entire leak, entire roof. And they're going to say, "Where have all the real men gone?" And the real men aren't giving away their labor anymore. They're not giving away their kindness anymore. The real men are done. Real men take care of themselves, not society, because you know society was built for men. Okay, society was built for men. But the, w the way that society is geared today is it's all about it's, you know, some guy said this to me that America is for women and babies. And that's the honest to goodness truth. A society is not geared. It's not built for, any, for men anymore. It's built to use men to extract wealth and resources and then reallocate those resources to others. And that's how it is. And the only way that you win is if you stop playing by their rules. OK. Stop playing by their rules. Stop contributing. Stop giving your wealth and your value away. That's that's the, that's how you rule. That's how you roll. Stop 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 having relationships in Western society. Say no. Walk away. That's the only way you're going to win at this game. It sounds harsh, but it's the honest to goodness truth. And you have to wake up and realize it. You have to wake up and realize it because if you don't, then there's nothing left. It's why we see Netflix employees complaining about airing controversial comedian Dave Chappelle special, despite his tremendous popularity. It's why we see young members of Congress calling ideas they disagree with policy violence. And it's why we see big tech companies increasingly acting with total disregard for open debate and due process alike. The college graduates that staff up these institutions have taken the corrosive campus ideology with them into their next stage of life. Guys, just imagine when some of these people, when some of these people inevitably begin to serve in the Supreme Court. Imagine when they begin, when these people become judges at every level, every level. Imagine when they become federal judges. Imagine when they become justices. Imagine how bad it's going to be then. Because it's going to be terrible. It's going to be absolutely terrible. If you think things are bad now, you haven't seen anything yet. Because these people are not going to give us a moment of peace. And when they get into these court positions, when they get into these positions where they can dictate the law, they are going to amend the Constitution as hard as they possibly can. They are going to limit free speech. They're going to reinterpret it however they choose to interpret it. This is the honest and goodness truth. Do not forget that the Supreme Court federal judges have a lot of power in how they're able to interpret the Constitution. And then the Supreme Court has the supreme, the absolute supreme power to, to interpret the Constitution however they choose to, regardless if it's a correct interpretation or not, which is the reason why one Supreme Court, another Supreme, you know, the Supreme Court can overturn previous Supreme Court decisions. They can say that the Supreme Court of 1970 got it wrong in 20, you know, in 2023. They can say, well, back in 1970, those people got it wrong. When it went to the Supreme Court in 2023, they got it wrong. We're going to overturn the, that decision, which we saw, which we actually saw happen, you know, not too long ago. And we're going to say, yeah, that's that they were wrong. We're changing that. So they can. So basically, the Supreme Court can, be, can decide how they choose to interpret the Constitution. 
let's let's continue on. It turns out we're not just talking about dumb woke college kids anymore. We're talking about a sickness of originating on a sickness originating on co campuses and infecting our entire society. That sickness is illiberalism, intolerance in the truest sense, the unwillingness to even coexist with beliefs and ideas that deeply contradict their own. The rise of that unwillingness is a ticking time thingy that threatens to destroy our political order. America isn't like Sweden or Norway. We're not a small country of largely homogeneous, homogeneous, uh, homogeneous people. We are always, we are and always have been a big, sprawling, ugly, beautiful melting pot of people from starkly different backgrounds with starkly different values. This only works if we're tolerant and tolerant. It, this only works if we tolerate each other's differences, no matter how distasteful we find them. If majorities start to view vi start to view bad behavior as an acceptable response to beliefs that offend them, that puts a country as divided and diverse as the United States on an inevitable path to civil war. If we want future generations to inherit the America we cherish, we must arrest the rise of this dangerous ideology before it's too late. We start at the root of the problem. Civics educating, education is failing in America with only 22% of eighth graders proficient in civics and it's getting worse. We need to improve and re-emphasize civics education and teach young people why, why past generations fought so hard for the things they increasingly take for granted or even re, uh, revile like the First Amendment. And we must reorientate our higher education system so that it is actively promoting speech, free speech and open debate, not indoctrinating students against these basic American values. State legislators can and should defund public colleges and universities that do not respect their students' rights and fire and replace administrators who do not promote these values. It's no small task, but it's one we have to embark on, not to save our college campuses from the excesses of wokeness, but to preserve our liberal democracy for generations to come. Now, it's a great article, but unfortunately, we're past that point. We're absolutely past that point. Guys, the amount of changes that would, would, it would need to be done, we basically have to clean house. You would have to clean house. This is it would be an or it would be a, a task of great magnitude. Basically, you would have all those professors would be have to be out of the job. And it wouldn't be just the professors, it would be the people who are running the schools. Not so not just the professors, but also the administrators. We're talking all the way up the food chain to the to, to the president of the university. All of these people would have to be out. Every last one of them would have to be out. All right? Even this, uh, guys, it goes deeper than that. We're talking about the policies at the university, like the handbooks, you know, how they handled things. All of these things would have to be torn up and rewritten based around based around a, a view of fairness and what is and, and the law in, in and of itself that aligns with you know with social policy and the constitution this would be a massive task and guys these people at the university they would go ballistic the administrators would go ballistic the students would go ballistic it would be it would be terrible and look at what they're doing they're turning to using they're turning to mob acts of the mob of destruction acts of destruction and chaos to get their way This is the reason why they want to get rid of the Second Amendment for so bad. Like I'll I will tell you guys right now. I'll tell you right now. If if the Democrats had a supermajority in the House, 
and in the Senate, the first thing to go would be the Second Amendment. That would be the first thing to go. To go. They, would, they would amend the Constitution immediately to either greatly restrict or outright get rid of the Second Amendment. They would get rid of it. So they would make it illegal for, for almost anyone to possess or openly carry a firearm. This would be what their first step towards Orwellian behavior. Next, there's the First Amendment. And trust me, hear me when I say they would have no problem amending it. They'd amend the, the Second Amendment. They would amend the First Amendment. They'd, they'd basically get rid of those and replace them, because they would say that these. They'd say that speech. They say that uh, speech and firearms are the greatest danger to our constitution, uh, greatest danger to our democracy, and those things have to be controlled. Firearms have virtually no place in Western society, except for the people that we say are authorized to have them. And speech is a, has to be controlled, or it has it can do grave damage to our society. And it would have very strict parameters on what speech is allowed and what speech is not allowed. And it basically put it the way YouTube puts it: if you're not sure if it's a uh, it's all right to, to say it here, then don't say it here. That's how YouTube says it. If you're not sure if it's right to discuss it here, then don't discuss it here. That's how YouTube puts it, and that's how the government would put it. If you're not sure if this would be protected, you know, if this is protected by speech, then don't say it. In other words, avoid pretty much almost every topic that questions anything. All right. And if that happens, the Internet would basically just be a place of just cat videos. People playing video games. And even then, the kinds of video games would be very would be would be would be problematic. All right. And and there would be no opinions whatsoever. You know, just people dancing on ca dancing on the camera. I mean, more and more resembling China. And the great censorships of China. And like I said, the majority of these universities are filled by college or by young women. And it's young women that are bringing us into this age of, 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 of being silenced and canceled. We saw M2 and, and, it, and, and what M2 did to society. And young women are quickly, they're quickly driving us there. They're quickly bringing us to that place where we will no longer have freedom of speech at all. We will no longer have the ability to protect ourselves. And they're going to just keep on amending it, amending, amending the Constitution, literally until there's nothing left. And that's why the only thing you can do is to walk away. Build yourself up, build your funds up, and walk away. Because, guys, you have to understand... Western society is kaput. It's kaput. And women are running. Women basically, they have no chill. And you have to understand the simps, the simps, this is how they like it. This is their way of survival. You need to be very, very careful of the simps because you've got a lot of simps running around the manosphere. And you're going to see more of them running around the manosphere as well as things get worse. Trying to act like they are part of the manosphere. But you can figure out who the simps are pretty quickly when you listen to what they say and the comments that they make. Like you're in the manosphere, but but you're making these views that are clearly extremely liberal, right? What are you even doing here? You know why you're here? Because you're scared. Because that's what happens, guys. These guys they look for they look for strong men to protect them. They look for strong men to protect them, and at the same time they want to bully strong men, and it doesn't work like that. That these guys need to be cut off from the pack. They need to be cut off from the pack. 
What do you guys think about this? Women are going to destroy our democracy. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away. And cheers.